Angular comes with a few services built right out of the box. And one of the services that you're going to be using a lot in your Angular programming is the HTTP client service. When you're building a rich client application, it's very likely that you're going to be making REST API calls to some API, getting the data and then processing the data, showing the view based on that data. So it's very likely that you're going to be calling and making HTTP calls to the API, get or post or whatever. Now, how do you make REST API calls like that from Angular? It turns out there's a handy service called HTTP client that Angular provides out of the box. In order to use that service, what you need to do is import the module that that service comes with. The module contains the service in the provider section, right? So when Angular has that module declared, it's an internal Angular module. So that code, that Angular code, has declared the HTTP client service in the provider section. So when you import that module in any of your modules, that service gets added to the injection context, that global service space, so that it's available for all your components to use. Typically, it makes sense to import the HTTP client module in the root module so that it's obvious where it is. And uh, it is something that is likely to be used across the board. So not that you'd have to, like we discussed before, it really doesn't matter where it gets injected, but it's a good thing to inject it at the root, uh, especially in the context of lazy loading where you don't know which modules are gonna be lazily loaded. We're not gonna be covering that, but. Think of it as a best practice to inject these commonly shared services and modules directly in the app root. So what's the name of the module that I need to import? It's called HTTP client module. And I'm gonna import it. HTTP. So this module, not sure why it didn't give me the autocomplete, so I had to manually type this in. This module is now a part of your application. So all the services, all the providers in this module are now a part of your injection context and you can use it wherever you need. I'm going to try doing this in the app.component.ts. I'm going to inject the service called HTTP client. That's the service which lets you make HTTP calls. It's, as the name says, a client to make HTTP calls. So in order to inject it, all I need to do is give this a name, variable name, and then HTTP client. I define the type. And uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. Make sure you're using the right import. The import is from Angular common HTTP. Now I have an instance of this HTTP and I'm gonna use the same pattern as with this service. I wanna make this uh, a member variable, just mark it private. And now I have this made as a member variable. And in my ng on init, I'm going to make a REST API call. ng on init. I can use this start HTTP to make a REST API call. Let me start by doing a get request. I do a dot get. There is a method called a dot get on top of this HTTP client object uh, to make get requests. One of the arguments it takes is the URL. There is similarly a post method on this HTTP object which lets you make post requests, which takes in the URL and a body of the request as well. Now, what's the URL? Let's try making a request to my favorite API, the GitHub API. This is something that you can call without authenticating. So this is something that's very handy for courses like this. Uh, I'm making a call to this URL. I'll copy this. This is api.github.com slash users slash username. So this is going to give information about that particular user on GitHub, like what their login is, when they logged in, the amount of contribution, all that stuff. I'm making that request for my GitHub username. And this is going to make that request and return back a response. Now, can I do this? Can I say let response equals? Well, it turns out I cannot because HTTP get is an asynchronous operation. What this does 
is set things in motion which is going to make that call but since it's asynchronous you cannot just assign the value here what you get back is an asynchronous object which is called in the angular world it's called an observable if you're an angular js programmer you know that something like this was called a promise in angular js it was a way for you to build structures and methods around this asynchronous operation so that you can give it a function and ask it to execute when that operation completes. Similarly, you can do something like that in Angular 2 plus. This kind of an object in Angular 2 plus is called an observable. It's not a promise anymore. It's an observable, which is kind of more powerful than promises. I'm going to be creating some more videos on observables which is a, in a different course. It's not going to be a part of this course. But what you need to know is that when you make an REST API call like this, when you do an HTTP.get, you're not going to get an object back as the response. What you're going to get back is an object called an observable, and you can pass to the observable a function. It's a function that you want to execute when that asynchronous operation completes. You're basically saying, hey, you're going to take a while, so I'm going to give you a function just execute it when your operation is done and you move on, right? So that's how asynchronous operations work here. And the way to hand that function over is, let me make this OBS equals. So what you're gonna get back here is an observable. You're not gonna get back the actual result. Let me expand this so that you can see this in one line. But you can hand this observable object your function and say, hey, OBS, execute this function when you're done. The way to do this is by doing OBS.subscribe, and then you give it your function. I'm gonna use the fat arrow function here and say console.log. Got the response. So what this is gonna do is when this app component is created, it is gonna get the HTTP client injected. And the HTTP client is gonna make a GET request to this API. What you're gonna get back is this observable, and you're gonna tell the observable, hey, execute this when you're done. And you do this by calling a method called subscribe on this observable. When this is done, the observable is gonna trigger this function, and it's gonna execute this function and it should get printed. This message should get printed on the console. I have a feeling that the GitHub API expects some headers, so we'll figure that out. We see an error. Okay, I see, got the response. So how do we figure out what that response is? Well, the observable is calling our function when its job is done. So is there a way you can tell the observable, hey, when you done fetching the API response, pass that API response to me. We can do that by passing an argument to your function. And now, let me print this. Now, the API is going to pass whatever it got when this executed to this function. It's gonna wait for this response to return before executing your function anyway. So you're telling, hey, observable, pass in that response to me so that I can do something with it. In this case, I'm printing to the console. And now here you see the response that's returned is a JSON structure with all that information that you've seen over here. This is cool, isn't it? Now let's take this a step further. Let's make this interactive. What I wanna do is put a text box over here which takes an input, which is the username and the button, when you click on it, it prints out the output in the view. It's kind of putting together a bunch of different things that we've learned in this course. Hopefully they're all gonna to come together and provide this very, very basic functionality, but it should cover all the things that we've discussed so far. Let's do this in the next video.